Ladies and gentlemen, here to the Gears of War Major League by ESL. I'm Mikester, and this is week three of the competition. First up, we have for you GPP taking on Citadel Gaming. It might seem like a little bit of a flashback because we saw these guys duke it out last week with such a short season, and these guys playing twice per season. They're bound to face each other straight away, and like this, we are going to get straight into the action. Best of five series for those who might may not be too familiar with how everything works and of course it is starting up right here first map will be fuel depot right there as well and uh, of course overall series we'll see plenty of maps featuring canals for map two war machine for map three and if needed clock tower for map four and mansion for map five now i mentioned about these guys playing off last week and it was actually gpp who took out a 3-1 victory now in that match there was a clock tower it went 4-0 to gpp we had a fuel depot also played and that actually went to citadel that was a 4-1 also then it was a canals and then it was a mansion and both maps were taken by GPP, both 4-2 and 4-3, respectively. So we had some great matches that were played, and we'll see if it's going to live up to the hype for this time around as well. As we get into the action, we'll see how it all will play out there as well. I'm going to be on board with Umi to start things off for this. So I remember, of course, to tweet out the stream, promote it. This is Gears of War in the Australian, New Zealand, or even Asia Pacific region in total. Now, Umi's going to get the down early off on clutches. Mercer will also get taken down. Umi going off right there. You saw him get the assist to those first two plays and then he was able to get the kill on the third. Last player alive is going to be of course Lumberjack and he is going to have that boom shot in hand though. He did aim out but he wasn't uh, able to pick off that first play. He did hesitate a little bit but was able to make up with, with it by picking off the kill on Simdibs. Second shot wasn't so lucky. He wasn't able to pick off the kill. Contest the Locust players there but Ubi is going to be picking off that down and that kill. But I mean overall you look at it and you're like okay. You look at you know you look at what just happened there and it was just Ubi the overall player that really made that impact. You know he got those 332 damage points there. He got two downs. He got an overall kill. Or rather he got you know two overall plays as well. He got the assist on one. Remember with the uh, overall answer at the beginning. That was Ubi's round from from start to finish and no one can really deny that GPP need to possibly answer things up with this next round they notice both nades going to be picked up from both teams a little bit more of a passive play this time though from the other uh, GPP squad and uh, it does seem like Mercer was just standing around a little bit doing not too much Lumberjack's going to get taken down there as well as we do have a 4v2 situation uh, becoming at the moment Clutch is going to be over out to the sniper side and you do notice with this 4v2 the, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a questionable play there with Mercer getting dropped down at the very beginning of the round. But, you know, it does leave them now in a position where, okay, you know, Clutch, can he pick off this 1v1 here? Gets heavy damage put on him, goes for the low roll. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm just sorry, I say it time and time again, he's not me. He's not able to pick up that low roll. It, it is a talent. And, uh, you know, we'll see how the things will actually pan out with uh, with this 1v4 situation for Rogi to take. He might be able to have been uh, able to cast his way out of it once upon a time, but I'm not too sure if he can clutch his way out of it as well. He's just going to be waiting, of course, at the corner of the uh, the, uh, the Hamburg side of things. He's going to be pushing on forward. Metapod is a uh, biffle right there. His BFF going to be taking him down with a clean headshot. To, uh, to clean him up. And of course, overall, that becomes 2-0 to zero to the team of Citadel Gaming right there. This is map one of the series, and we'll see how things will continue forward in this next round. Let me know who you think will be taking this one out. I'm personally backing for this map, Citadel. They've got 2-0 to zero for, so far. I wouldn't be surprised, really, at this rate, if they can continue it going for a clean sweep. Either way, we're going to be having Metapod over onto this boom shot. You see Rogi going to be over in the inside of the hangar as well. Now, Lumberjack, he tries to go for that boom shot as per normal, but he's going to get taken down. Mercer pushes through the mid with the assist from Rogi. He's able to pick off that kill there on Ubi. And of course, Ubi was that playmaker on this round, uh, two rounds ago, where he just did absolute mayhem to the entire team of GPP. This time it got shut down early, but this time they still find themselves with the numbers advantage to Citadel as they lead 3-2 to two here in the overall numbers in this round. Now Mercer over onto this hangar side. Of course, he's over in the middle side. He's going to be getting shot at over, uh, you know, over on that mid and he's going to try and get out. Now his teammates there with him and they need to collect on this 2v1, but they're not able to do so. Right here, Rogan's going to be able to take down one now. He's got a 1v2 right in front of him. Not going to be able to make too much happen. Once again, he's going to get down there by Metapod and he will get taken down. That's 3-0 
zero so far for the team of Citadel Gaming. And I mean, I just don't know what uh, what the GPP squad can really do to really try and mix things up. They've they've gone a bit slow out at some points. They've gone played a little bit more of an aggressive round. Both times it hasn't really worked out for them. They're down three to zero, and they need to mix something up collectively and aggressively to possibly make something happen. Hell, maybe even pick up the sniper rifle, play to your strengths. You know, you got Lumberjack, who's an insane sniper rifle player, um, and of course work with those power weapons. Go for maybe more control of that boom shot and see what can really happen from there. Now you notice one player on the on the helipad is going to be getting shot at and the boom shot controlled by the cock team. Now no one's really paying too much attention to Lumberjack right there. He was able to pick off an easy unawareness kill there from uh, on Metapod as Ubi also gets taken down there from that boom shot. So all out in the canister of the boom right now as they're trying to push Lumberjack. Lumberjack gets taken down as well. Mercer's going to clean up the kill on Mike Yippy, but Ubi's going to be that last player that's going to be down. So there we go. The prediction of the clean sweep is out of the water there as GPP are going to be able to get their first round on the board. Can it be a four-round comeback, though? That is going to be the question, and we'll just have to see how it'll all pan out. Next round, though, starting up. Round five between these two teams. Of course, first series and first map for this week's uh, matches of the Gears of War Major League by ESL Australia. I'm excited for it as I'm on board with Ubi once again. He went huge in this side a couple of rounds ago. We'll see if he can do it again. Nade's coming out already. Ubi goes to dodge. His teammate's going to get taken down. It's actually a friendly fire grenade there as well. Simdibs isn't going to be counting his lucky stars tonight. He also got taken down as well as Ubi tries to push over to the helipad. He's trying to get some shots off. He'll get taken down. Last one alive is going to be Metapod. He tries to contest over on Rogi and uh, Rogi trying to get this one and Lumberjack's going to be, be the one to clean up that fight. He's going to take down Rogi as well. Why not? A little bit of friendly banter. And that's going to uh, bring the scores a little bit closer together here in this overall game. So, you know, from a team that was 3-0 down, they've now put two rounds on the board in consecutive session. So, I mean, that, that's, you know, that's what they want, right? That's They want to be getting these rounds. They can go on that four-round comeback. It is possible. We have seen it done in the past. Considering Citadel's track record on Fuel Depot so far, though, I would have expected them to possibly get out, you know, 4-0, 4-1, but it doesn't seem to really be the case so far. And GPP are really bringing it to them. That's why these teams, of course, are competing for these uh, huge spots on the side. But right now, Dumberjack and Mercer are going huge right now plays down left front and center this should be lumberjack's round he's going to get the players and no one's going to be there to stop him blast by alive is going to be metapod and he's going to get dropped as well that was just a huge cluster over on the middle of the map at the boom shot. Everyone wanted to be a part of that one. Locust members galore. All four players went there and they got shut down. They didn't know what was good for them right there. But it doesn't matter. You know why? Because we're going to that round seven. Which is what we want to decide map number one here in the series. For week three of the Gears of War Major League. Blades picked up here from the Locust team. Now a little bit later. For the Cog team. Boom shot seeming like it's going to be a little bit more open control from the midside, but two players inside from the Cog team. Now, right now, you're going to have a melee getting taken, taking down Lumberjack. Now, of course, he had the support of his team from the side. Nice boom shot from Mike Yippie to take down Clutch, and he's going to do a suicide to take down Rogi. That's going to leave Mercer going to be the last one alive, and right now, he's got three players left to deal with. So, Mikey, you saw, took down himself as he went to take down Rogi. So, you still have Metapod, you have Mikey, you have Sim Dibs left here in this one. Mercer is taken to full red right here. He's going to get flanked. He's going to get taken. Citadel take map number one in the series. They lead 4-3 to three, and that is all she wrote. Great game there to start that one out. That is what we wanted to see of course. What a game that was and of course the guys from, uh, from Citadel they want to be putting some more games on the board. Of course, overall, the overall standing sits uh, with Boneyard Bandits up first. You know, in first place, Incept coming in second there, of course, with GPP in third. Citadel, unknown and uproar, then follow. So, so far for Citadel, they're one and three in the league. They had a couple of uh, rough matches last week, but GPP, they're three and one. So, they're looking to continue that along. It was only map number one as well. Um, and, you know, we'll see how that will uh, potentially play out into the uh, the next round right now. And uh, it is, uh, has come to my attention. There is a little bit of frame, uh, you know, video lagginess as well, which is quite unfortunate. We'll try to resolve that one as it goes along. But uh, as we uh, as we get into this next match, and of course, teams uh, decide to choose whatever sides they are. We'll take the time to update the scoreboard. Now, overall score is 1-0, to zero, of course. If for those just tuning in, we had Citadel take out a great... A great three, uh, three, 
I was going to say 3-0, but uh, it was 4-3, of course, as my mind blank starts to work tricks. And uh, it does seem like these teams are going to be staying on the same side. So we'll go from there and uh, we'll see how things play out. I'll give them another five seconds to uh, to be able to maybe make their final decision. We'll kick it off in five, four, three, two, one. All right, choice is made. They're staying the same sides. Makes it easy for me as we'll uh, get into this next one, of course, and we'll see how that will play out ultimately in the end. Will the team of GPP be able to answer back with map number two? Or will they be planning on a, uh, a long-running comeback there for this one? I'm just, I'm not too sure. We'll just have to wait and see how it'll play out in the end uh, for this one. As, uh, you know, we'll see we'll see how things go. Of course, for those watching the stream, let me know who you think could be taking some things out. Uh, you know, will it be the squad of... Uh you know, will it be the squad of GPP to come back in this next one? Will it be Citadel? Let me know who you think, from your experience watching these teams, what it will be. Scoreboard updating there for you all as well. That's what we want. That's left... Uh, that's exactly what we want, really, uh, right here in, uh, in this stage. And, uh, yeah, let's get into map number two. It is going to be Canals. And uh, we'll see how that will ultimately play out in the end right here as we load into that one. Ten seconds to go time, ladies and gentlemen. That is what we want. Of course, remember to tweet at Gaussiani, the uh, community hub broadcasting these matches here on behalf of East Australia uh, right now. Of course, community broadcast from the community for the community as we enter into map number two. Remember, it is 1-0 for Citadel right here at the moment. And uh, you will see... The other guys from uh, Citadel pushing up over on this middle bridge first now. It's going to be contested in the back. And Lumberjack, unfortunately, is going to have the unlucky job of dropping out first. Clutch going to get a nice kill on there on Ubi. There on the middle bridge. Mercer's going to get taken down as well. You see Rogi trying to hold that middle bridge as well, with the, uh, trying to support his teammate. But unfortunately, Clutch is just going to get absolutely hammered, getting taken down over on the middle of the map, leaving Rogi last one alive. Preactive, a couple of shotgun bullets there as well as he moves on up to the high side of Canals. It's going to be contested there as uh, he tries to make something happen, but it seemed like he was lagging a little bit. Either way, he uh, he really couldn't make anything stick, and he did get taken down. Now, right there, that's going to be one to zero for the Citadel squad. It seems a little bit rusty from the uh, the guys here at GPP. They don't seem like they are uh, they are uh, you know they've they've done too well for you know for the opening rounds. I mean, they, remember this same thing happened in Fuel Depot, right? They were playing shaky. They started playing well again, and then they make one mistake, and game's over because they're already three 0 down, right? So that you know we're, we're going to see if they can maybe try counteract this in this next map. Or maybe Citadel just playing it, you know, just that one step forward. Lumberjack once again getting dropped off early. He tries to go for these early contestants, but he's just not going to really make it work. Same thing happens with Mercer. He tries to back up his teammate. He's then going to get taken down in retaliation. Now, Clutch is going to get dropped there as well. Rogi once again is going to be the last one alive. He's already down. We don't even need to spectate him to see how it's going to play out. You can actually see Metapod Curb Stop. Well, that's an interesting one as well. Uh, but that's going to be 2-0. to zero. That's two very, very quick rounds for them as well. Uh, for, for this one. So, you know, that is quite unfortunate indeed. But what we'll be seeing is round number three coming on up right now uh, for, for everything. I mean, everything and anything as we start back into this round. I'm going to jump on board with Mercer. He's normally the second player to die here so far traditionally in this map. But he's going to be that player sitting back with that Lancer. Now, notice Lumberjack's going to be over on the blocks in front. He's going to be able to get the shot over on the side, but already he's getting crossed out from the, uh, the other end as well. Now, Clutch going to get the down on Ubi. Swapping over to Lumberjack. Not, don't even need to. He's going to get taken down there as Clutch takes down Ubi. Mikey is going to get dropped there by the, uh, by the hands of Mercer. And that's going to leave three players up for uh, for the Locust team. Now, notice him Dim's over on his sniper tower, though. So that 1v1 over at the high side of Middle Bridge is going to be Metapod having to fight his way out of a, uh, of a 1v2. It was like trying to find himself out of a paper bag. It just wasn't really going to be working out. Now, last one live going to be Sim Dim's. He has a sniper, though, but he's going to put it away in favor of the Nash. And it could have maybe possibly worked for an active down. Either way, it doesn't matter because Mercer is going to assist Clutch and they're going to just be able to pick off those kills in the end. That is what we want, though, and that is how we are going to uh, to be playing or attempting to play this one out, right? With, uh, with, the, with the rounds going back to that round seven basis. That's what we want overall in uh, in these kind of matches. We want to see how this will play out. We want to see how it will pan out. We want to see if they can make the dream real for back-to-back game number or round number sevens right here in this one as we jump on board with this uh, this next round moving forward 
on board with Ubi, getting some nice shots on Lumberjack. Lumberjack, it seems, can't really sit on a, a good position here on, on this map because they, they, he just gets pincered out, right? He, they, they really target him. They know where he's going to sit. They've either done their research or he's just putting himself in very bad positions in comparison to his team. You see him getting taken down early. You see the rest of the GPP squad getting taken down quite early there as well. Most is going to get the shot there on Ubi. As you see, Sim Dims, he's going uh, he's go, he's to assist uh, on, on Ubi. going to be able to pick off those kills. 3-1 to one so far. Uh, becomes the overall count. Of course, do apologize for any f uh, lag that you, the stream might be having. Still working out some kinks, it seems, as the uh, the encoder seems to be having some fun there on the server. But it's okay. Overall score, 3-1 here in this map. 1-0 in the series. Potentially about to be 2-0 to zero in one more round if Citadel able to close out one more. We'll see Ubi once again pushing up to this middle bridge. You notice on per side, one side he'll go to contest the other end. The other side, he'll just go in straight to those middle bridge. Go for those power weapons and flush out with the grenades. GPP are now pushed all the way back over to this one. Bottom side river, their side bridge. Talk about why I've been picked up. And it's going to be able to get a nice shot there on Metapod. However, they need to work with their numbers and they can't afford to drop or, or even make any mistakes this point out, right? With Lumberjack, with this sniper, they, he, you know, he needs to start making some connects. We've got Simdims, of course, opening out the other side. He needs to watch out that he won't get popped. There we go. Simdims made the mistake of not recognizing there was another sniper there facing. They didn't have that traditional sniper battle they see at the very beginning. But this time you see Mikey holding his own over on the sandbag. He's going to be the last one live. He's going to get shown in the back there from Lumberjack. And that is going to be another GPP round, 3-2. to two. Now, we saw this similarly last map on Fuel Depot where GPP were able to come back. They, you know, they got a couple of rounds. This time, not so consecutively, whereas last map was... Where, but, you know, they're, they're still getting to the stage where they're 3-2, you know. They, I, I have definitely complete confidence that they can make it 3-3. Three, three, but it's all about if they can get those two rounds. If they stop making those mistakes, that lose them those initial contestants. Now, I actually want to jump aboard with Lumberjack here for this one. Because this is normally the one, when, in the rounds that they, they've lost, he's always that one to uh, to drop out first, right? So, this time, he's going to pick up that sniper rifle, and he's going to try, try and aim. He's going to play to his strengths, and, of course, that sniper rifle is most definitely a big strength for them. Now, nades coming out from Ubi over onto the bottom river side. Not going to really be able to connect for him. However, the Locust Demon pushed up on high side and no one was there to call that one out. Already two players on their side bridge, the cog side bridge, will be able to clean up those kills but that is not the point. The point was no one was watching that high side. The player that was trying to get up there got taken out in a in a flurry of kills right there. 2v2 right there over on the bridge. It was a 3v2 man advantage but right here it becomes a 1v1. Metapod taking on Lumberjack. Rolls over on the bridge. L uh, Metapod gets the, gets the advantage with the first shot and Lumberjack I thought had that one but it was not meant to be. Lumberjack loses the 1v1. Metapod, he rolled up the stairs through Lumberjack's coordination out of key and took the round 4-2 for themselves as well. What a play there from them and nicely done there from Citadel as they lead 2-0 to zero here in this one as well. That is what they want to be uh, to be leading this one. And 4-2 uh, to two being their overall count. You know, 2-0 to zero so far. They've gone uh, you know, so far they can, you know, you can be think, okay, you know, what, what's going to really happen next? Well, i tell you what's going to happen next. It is going to be a war machine, and that could tell the difference between uh, between these teams. Will they swap sides, though, is the question. Will they stay on Locust? Will they go on COG? I just don't know. Don't know indeed as a uh, wait for these guys to potentially make that choice. Don't want to return to the main menu. That would not be a fun thing indeed, as... Uh, doesn't seem like these guys are going to be making the choice, which makes it a lot easier on my scoreboard, I do say. Uh, you know, it is definitely going to be a great thing indeed for that. Just need to change some numbers, don't need to change some text. That's what we want, but we'll kick it into War Machine right now. No one's going to be making any changes, so that's great. Uh, that's a good enough reason for me, right? So, let's see how they will pan out on map number three. It's already 2-0 to zero for the guys at Citadel Gaming. The scoreboard is a lie. It's about to be accurate in one second. There we go. Two to zero there for them. And we'll really have to see how this can continue. For uh, Will it be a three nil? Will it go to a map five? Or will it be just be forced into a map four? And that'll be it. That'll be all she wrote. We'll just have to find out. GPP, we know they're a good squad. We know they play like the best of them. Because they are, of course, these two teams, both rated as, as potentially the top two of the top three teams here in the, uh, the major league itself. So it's going to be interesting to see how GPP can possibly think of, you know, in, in a mentality to themselves to go, okay, you know what? We, you know, we need to come back. We've been down before. Uh, you know, what can really happen? Fun fact, the only match that so far GPP have lost has been to the Boneyard Bandits. Now, another team that's, you know, rated as a top three team, 
arguably even the best team in the Major League so far, and they lost 3-0 to zero against that team as well. So it possibly could happen again here. Remember, these guys played last week, and uh, you know, same matchup, and GPP actually won 3-1. to one. Of course, map and voting selection is all up to the players. They, they ban, and then they pick uh, turn by turn based. So you know, we're really going to have to see how uh, how this really impacts and how the mentality of GPP is really going to be holding up here in this uh, in this one. As we have the uh, the Lancer shots coming out of Mike EP watching over through this middle side. Of course, Clutch is going to be the player watching over that mid. Now, I'm looking over at the top side of the map where two of the Locust team have actually pushed on up and they've actually forced. I believe that was Rogi who normally picks up those grenades and uh, goes from there to, to be able to force back down. So he's going to be able to pick up that talk boy. Taking a full red though as well as he tries to hide from uh, the players up top at the Troika. Now, Rogi's taking a full red. He's going to get taken down. The play with the nades is going to try and flush him out. He's not going to have an opportunity to though as he backs back out. Mercer though got caught with his head in a rock. He falls straight. Straight on out for the pistol from the other uh, guys from Citadel right there. And that is not a great start for them either way. Sniper for Lumberjack. He's not going to be connecting anytime soon. And uh, he'll try to rotate back out of the uh, out, of, out of the side into the trenches. But he'll get taken down as well. Sim Dims was there if he needed to assist. But, I mean, you look at his team. There was already three players there ready to cross out. Clutch and uh, Mercer. Sorry, Clutch and, uh, and Rogi left, uh, left alive there for this one. As Clutch tries to get some pistol shots out. They're in a, between a rock and a hard place right now. The GPP squad, they're getting crossed out. Rogi gets taken down and dropped now as well as Clutch tries to go for the kill. He's going to get down to the top of the sandbag because that's just how he rolls. And that is going to be him getting down there as well uh, between these two. Now, you got to keep in mind, this, this match uh, started at 7. Of course, a couple minutes late into that. And it was scheduled to go on to 8. So, you know, that's just normal allocation. Hour per, per match before the next one's, of course, supposed to start for our round 2. You look at it now and you're like, well... I was not expecting that one, you know. I wasn't expecting you know, these matches to be going so quickly or to be going one-sided. With Citadel taking that round, you know, you, you really got to think, okay, GPP, what can they do to really mix things up? Now, pushing over through the trenches is definitely a great way to get it, get it off. You see, uh, you know, Mike Yippie, he went for that talk first. He got punished. He had poor awareness there in that round, possibly relying on his teammates. Either way, with that talk charging, it was an easy bait to get taken. Now, Clutch is actually going to get taken down in return, but uh, it was Mercer to take down Simdims. Now, Mercer's going to get down there from Ubi, and he's going to be instantly revived there from uh, from Rogi as they try to push on this player over onto this nade side. The, the shot's going to be coming out, but great shots from Ubi there will be downing, uh, you know, will, will, be, will be downing a lot of players. And that was just Citadel completely turning things around. The shots from the back and the shots from the front from Ubi and Metapod allowed them to be able to secure themselves that round. I mean, that's, I guess, ideally what the goal was for them, to be able to just pincer what they could and work their way through it. However, we'll just see how if this is going to be the case. And uh, we will, of course, open up to this next round. I'm on board with Clutch, and you notice three plays from the Locust team. They're mixing it up and pushing an aggressive sniper play. Now, I don't believe the Locust team has done the same play twice so far here in, uh, in this execution. I believe they have been, you know, so far just Mixing up. They sent players up top of the first round. Players over the talk by the second round. This time, players over onto that sniper. Now, you realize with that sniper being picked up, players going to be rotating over. It has allowed GPP to pick up this talk bow, though. And Rogi, even though he might be skipping around a little bit, he can use that talk bow. He's got those nades as well, though. So, he's going to be power, power weaponing up for himself as he uh, reloads those talk bow. Uh, throws the grenades to try and flush out his opposition. Gets a little bit of a bad reload as well. Lumberjack's going to get taken down, which is awkward for him as he's going to get dropped. 3v2 situation right here. The tag for the talk could definitely be helpful right now as Mercer tries to get in the cover to try and battle his opposition over on the sandbag. He's going to get a nice kill there on Metapod. Needs to get the second kill as well. He's not going to be able to and he actually gets distracted by trying to go for the revive. He's going to get taken down as well as Ubi managed to get a nice shot off as he backed away and that's 3-0 to zero to Citadel Gaming. They're one round away from getting the 3-0 sweep and getting a 4-0 sweep here in the map itself. We'll see how that will make it. We'll see if it'll pan out. We'll see what will happen. But what I want to see, what I want to see is what Citadel will be doing next. Notice I mentioned they do something a little bit different slightly every now and then. Nades picked up from both squads. Sniper though picked up from the COG team. And uh, Clutch is going to get a nice early kill there on Ubi. We have Mikey pushing aggressively over on the middle of the map there as well. Two players are waiting from the GPP squad. Nades from Rogi will take down Mikey. Metapod also dropping. Last player alive got stunned as well. And that was Simdib. So we're going to see finally another round for a round from GPP. You know, we've seen them always come back late game to be able to pick off their first round. However, we'll see. Can they finally accomplish a four-round comeback? That is going to be my question. 
and uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that will uh, will pan out in the uh, in the end. As we do have, of course, the shots coming out over onto this sniper side where they've sent two players. Not going over, not bit bothering to go over to this window side. Doesn't seem like either team really wanting to do that. As a player over on the troika of the uh, the troika up top of the map will uh, be Ubi as Simdim's down to clutch as well. Now Lumberjacks is going to get dropped. That was over on the sniper side as well, mind you. And you will notice as well over on that troika side, players still going to be up there watching that advantage. Now it's the three v three right here. We have a shotgun battle up top of the map. Let's swap back over to Ubi so we can witness that all happen. But he's actually going to be just focusing on the flag, getting the shots off, I mean, needs to be careful behind him as well. Now, Rogue is going to get taken down, Mercer's going to down Mike Yippie as well in retaliation, so you've got to keep in mind that with this shot, Ubi will be uh, will be possibly in a good position to get this one. No, Ubi's going to get taken down, but the Troika from Metapod will be downing, or will be getting the kill there on Mercer. Clutch tries to assist, he's going to get dropped as well, and that is all she wrote, 4 to 1 for the squad of Citadel Gaming here in this map. They then take out the game there as well. 3-0. to zero. That's what you want. Playing Locust all three times. That could have been the charm. Normally these guys swap it between the two to get that cog advantage on some maps, but was it going to be the case this time around? And it, uh, it is going to result in Citadel going up 3-0. Winning the series 3-0, not something I thought I would be seeing here in this game. I definitely thought we might have been seeing a closer one, maybe even a game five for the night.